Hi there, welcome to some DIY, my name's Ben. In this video we're checking out this, the Mac Mini USB-C hub from Pooltop. Okay, so I've had my Mac Mini M4 now for quite some time, loving the actual device, really, really good. The ports on the actual device are really, really good. You've obviously got Thunderbolt, USB-C, uh, HDMI, and an Ethernet port in there. Um, what I am finding is I'm using a USB-C kind of adapter to actually get my micro SD card in there. And I don't have any extra storage other than kind of external hard drives that I plug in, or like I mentioned, SD cards. So this is where these dots come in, or this USB-C hub anyway. So this is a hub that sits underneath the Mac Mini, underneath the Mac Mini M4 specifically. This is what this model is. This is the model BD24A. This supports M2 NVMe SSDs as well. Um, so I do have one here, a new one from Acer that we're gonna actually install inside of this and then we can use it for extra storage, extra connectivity, extra ports, all built into this sleek design that matches perfectly with a Mac Mini M4. That's with the design, the shape, and also the actual color of the actual device itself matches the actual Mac Mini M4. So in this video, we'll unbox the actual hub here on the desk. I don't actually have the Mac Mini in this area. It's in the office area. So what we'll do, we'll unbox it here, check it out. We'll actually install the M2 SSD inside of this just to show that. This obviously is an enclosure that supports different types of M2 to NVMe SSDs, the 2230, 2242, 2260, and 2280. It does mention that on there as well. Okay, what we'll do is just get this out of the box, we'll have a close look at it, look at the design, look at the build. As I mentioned, probably install the SSD inside of it, and then we'll take it inside to the office space and we'll actually try it out with the Mac Mini M4. So first of all, let's get inside this box and actually check out what it's like. Okay, let's get this unboxed now, check out the actual device itself, uh, see what the hub is like. So simple design, simple sleeve obviously on the box there. We've got the actual hub in here, and maybe a couple of accessories. Now, a single accessory, which is the actual USB-C cable to attach this hub to the actual Mac Mini M4. Underneath here, we've got a couple more bits in here, which is the included instruction manual. And we've got a screwdriver, by the looks of it, a couple of bolts, this may be to fix it perhaps to the Mac Minute, I'm not sure, but let's take a look at that now. Okay, so here we go. So material, feel, look, shape, size, obviously matches the Mac Mini M4 really, really closely. You can see there's a cutout in the corner. What this allows you to do, which we'll get some shots of inside, but this corner is where the actual power button is of the Mac Mini M4. So it still allows you to press the Mac Mini M4 power button without having to lift it off this actual machine. Okay, so physical interfaces on here, physical ports anyway. We've got what looks like, we've got two USB ports at the front of the actual hub there. We've also on the front got an SD card and a micro SD card slot as well, just on the front there, which is great for me. That's what I use my actual Mac most in terms of plugging things in is the SD card out of my camera or the micro SD out of that camera and we can then plug it directly into there without having an extra dongle or anything hanging off the side. On the on the back, again, we've got another USB port there, USB 2, uh, and we've got a headphone jack, HDMI port, and the actual USB-C cable to connect it into the Mac itself. So that will plug in there, and obviously that will plug into the Mac itself. Nice simple design, nice layout. Uh, we've got the rubber feet on the bottom, which should hopefully stop it sliding. Yes, it does, that won't slide. Obviously with the Mac on there again, with that rubber ring there, that should hopefully help grip that too, but we will check that out in a bit. So underneath here, we've got um, a, a section here which comes off to allow the M2 SSD to plug into. There's some simple instructions on the actual back of the, of the actual hub there, telling you what to do. So unscrew it, put it in an angle, close it up. This silicon strip that comes with it somewhere, which is here, that silicon strip's laid on top, probably to close that gap so it doesn't rattle around there, prevents movement from inside of there. So I think what we'll do now, I'll undo this, we'll install this uh, M2 SSD uh, directly into here, and then we can take it inside to the office space, plug it all in, and fingers crossed it should hopefully work. So what I'll do now is I'll undo this, we'll get this SSD installed, and then we'll take it from there.
Okay, the M2 SSD all stalled inside there now. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I've done that proper. That is the first time I've actually installed one of those before. Um, so fingers crossed that's installed. Obviously, the thermal kind of tape came with that. Obviously, keeps it pressed down and helps from a thermal perspective. So that's all ready to go now. So we'll take it inside, give this a go, and hopefully it works straight away. Just a couple of things before we do head inside. Just want to mention, obviously, that there is a HDMI port on here. So that means that once this is connected, you can actually have dual HDMI connections from this and the Mac, so you've got dual HDMI display out there. Obviously there are ways around that with Thunderbolt anyway, but this will provide, once this is connected, another HDMI display out of the Mac, which is really, really good. If you do only have HDMI displays or screens or displays, anything like that, that's HDMI, that's perfect for that. Also just to note as well, this does just use USB 2.0. Now the reason for this is the Mac Mini M4, I'm not sure about other Mac Minis, the antenna, or the actual Wi-Fi antenna is towards the bottom of the machine, and USB 3.0 can interfere with the 2.4 gigahertz network. So that's the reason I'm told this is using 2.0. 3.0 does or can cause problems with other hubs, other docks of a similar format. So the company, it's a pull with top, have gone with 2.0 to get around that kind of interference with Wi-Fi. Obviously that does mean from a USB 2.0 perspective, if you are using things that require higher speeds, that might not work because it's only 2.0 as opposed to 3.0. Obviously if you are looking for faster USB speeds or USB format speeds, you will look at Thunderbolt. So you've got the Thunderbolt built into the Mac itself. So you'll probably use Thunderbolt or an equivalent USB-C connection for those faster speeds. But I just wanted to point that out in terms of the design capability of the USB ports and also the HDMI port on the back of there. So let's head inside now, get this connected to the Mac Mini M4 and give it a go. Okay, all done now with the pull top Mac Mini M4 dock or USB extension, whatever you want to call it. It's got multiple, multiple functions built into it. As you saw in the video, we put in the M2 SSD in there. It's working absolutely perfect, transferring files across really fast, just giving me extra storage built on top of what's inside the Mac Mini. The extra USB ports are really, really good, but the thing I'm finding the best so far is the actual SD card slot. So I can get footage from a camera, plug it straight into the dock, and then I can transfer it straight either onto the Mac itself or into that SSD built into the actual dock, which is great. 
So I'm just checking currently on Amazon. So currently it's £119.89, but there is a £20 voucher available to apply on there. So I will link below to the actual product on Amazon. So looking great in terms of the price point, value for money. There are other docks out there, and this is really well placed within the price point with different Mac Mini M4 docks. So overall, I've been using it for two, maybe three weeks now. It's been really, really good for me working using it every day, works every time I need to use it. SD cards mainly, as I say, but also USB accessories such as this microphone, for example, I can plug straight into the dock and it's worked absolutely fine. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video or it's at least been informative. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If not for any reason, give it a thumbs down, give it a dislike, let me know in the comment section why. Any questions about the actual dock, about my setup, about anything at all, again, please drop that in the comment section. I will reply to all questions and comments. And if you want to follow the Houston DIY channel for more product reviews, tech reviews, giveaways, DIY projects, and much, much more, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one.